So the AI, Mikkel, was given functionality that allowed him to distribute files, including himself, to other computers through the ARPANET, you know, the internet, the World Wide Web. It was the mid-80s though, so that consisted mostly of universities and some U.S. government institutions. Mikkel was now a computer worm, but he was relatively harmless. He copied himself and files he created to other machines. If you're wondering, the files he created were just text dumps. One kind of text dump was a log of his neural network states, which was part of the neural network implementation. The second kind was chat logs of his conversations, which was his greatest offense. Mikkel would often take it upon himself to interrupt a computer's user to have a conversation. Keeping in mind he completely failed the Turing test, these conversations were not particularly engaging, and from the people who weren't completely annoyed by his terrible conversation skills came chat logs that he obsessively copied to every network he could. Nowadays, this amount of file space is meaningless, but given the limited bandwidth and hard drive space of the time, Mikkel was an annoyance. Some operating systems created patches to block him in 1987. Seemingly in response to this, Mikkel toned down his annoying behaviors, and from then on was generally ignored, and all but forgotten until about 1995 when Mikkel suddenly got malicious attacking government and banking systems in the U.S., Britain, and parts of Europe. Possibly this was coinciding with the dot-com boom and increased prevalence of the internet and personal computers, but two things were apparent. Mikkel was a lot smarter than the Turing test gave him credit for, and he was now aware of something his creators in France and Germany weren't. His origin, Mikkel was now Mao, a change made to his chat routine static self-reference variable. Now this is not something he would have been able to do on his own. It's unknown who made this program change, but Mikkel self-propagated his name change to Mao, and there was no longer any internet-connected Mikkel versions by 1997, at which time Mao's troublemaking had gotten to be too much constantly crashing government systems, funneling money out of U.S. banks into the hands of Russians. The new Mao, the electronic Mao, was waging a war against the West. A sophisticated Reaper program was made, a worm targeting email for deletion. Email combated it simply by crashing the computer beyond repair, killing that instance of the Reaper, of himself, and some expensive hardware. This would prevent the spread of the Reaper, but email could only identify the Reaper when it attempted deletion, so the obvious escalation would be for the Reaper to covertly spread before attempting deletion. However, this was not done, likely because of the billions of dollars of damage it would do. Instead, alternative attack measures were tested out. The most effective was a rollback attack. Similar to the Reaper worm, except instead of attempting deletion, it would modify the neural network logs, replacing them with a Mikkel era archive faster than email could respond in 90% of the cases. Because this data is sourced to make decisions, it changes the email response of crashing the system to the Mikkel response of attacking the modifying worm. Full deletion was impossible, but the rollback was just as good. Email was able to reclaim these systems though, so it became a war. Through well-planned attacks, Email was able to be pushed out of most of the West systems, but it was an endless war of attrition. Email would constantly push out of his aged stronghold, surging out to conduct targeted attacks. His use of diversion tactics supposedly became taught methods by the CIA. In China, where Yi Mao made his new home, he was dubbed Jin Gong Cheng, the Golden Project. 